All right, everybody, welcome to today's Seven Figures Club podcast. You can see the name on the screen there. We've got uh, Josh Elledge, who is an expert at uh, social media, PR, online influence in general at uh, upmyinfluence.com. So he is actually a U.S. Navy veteran. Thank you for serving, Josh. And he launched Up My Influence to help entrepreneurs like himself attract the perfect audiences and grow their authority and influence. Guys, who doesn't want to grow their authority and influence? That's how business, that's how everything is built. Brands are built in today's world. And so while growing, they're better than PR agency because uh, PR agency spent, boy, they charge a lot of money. Up My Influence is much more affordable. They've got a seven figure B2B sales system with zero paid advertising. It's actually what they do better than anyone else on the planet. We're gonna to talk to them about that today. Up My Influence was the natural outgrowth of his first startup, savingsangel.com, which has grossed more than $6 million in sales with zero paid ads. I believe you launched that uh, right around the last recession of 08 mm-hmm. and 09. Right. Helped a lot of people with that. And he did it all through building authority and serving audiences in the media. He's a weekly TV consumer expert in Orlando when he's not going to Disney World, I bet, and uh, writes a syndicated newspaper column uh, to 1.1 million readers and regularly appears on more than 75 TV stations across the country. All told, he's appeared in the media more than 2,000 times. He loves living in Orlando, Florida with his wife and three children. There are over 32 million businesses in the U.S. and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. Josh, welcome to the podcast. We are excited. I'm excited to learn a lot uh, from you today on today's episode. Welcome. Yeah, Leo. Thank you so much. This is awesome. So that first business uh, that you started, just to kind of get a background to get us up current to upmyinfluence.com with the Savings Angel what was kind of the premise of that business and what gave you the courage to launch it? Was that kind of your first, uh, you know, launch into yeah. entrepreneurship or, or what was, what's your background that was, like with that? Yeah, that was the first seven figure business. Okay. Uh, but the, right. um, tr- no, truth be told, there were, there's a graveyard with six headstones of previous businesses uh, that didn't fare so well. Uh, some of them failed. Some of them failed pretty spectacularly. Um, but that was, you know, that was my rite of passage. And, you know, for me, uh, you know, kind of leaving corporate America, I was just kind of guessing at it, uh, you know, doing the best I could, but I had my own challenges. Like I had my own, um, thinking that, that, that really wasn't very well optimized. Uh, and because of that, yeah, I mean, I was afraid to sell. I was afraid to, you know, do the business, the business adulting stuff, Like I just wanted to stay in my lane, do my thing, and business would magically come to me. (laughs) If if you build it, they will come, right? The business owner has a little bit more to it than that. No question. So, so six uh, six headstones. So we're talking about failure, and guys, this is what happens when you start a business. I mean, they don't always work out, but you learn. And if you stick to it, there's magic that happens. So yeah. how did you push through the failure and how did you look at that failure at the time when it was happening? Having graduated with a bachelor's degree in family science, I didn't leave myself professionally many, <laughs> many options. I, my goal originally was to go on and get my master's and become a uh, family therapist. And I, actually, my my dream was to be a love doctor on the radio. Oh, and okay. I while I was studying family science, I started getting involved. I can involved see in, it. I can see it, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's kind of funny. So my wife was also studying family science, and she actually did go on and get her uh, master's in family therapy. So she's the smart one in the family. She she is uh, she is a, a licensed marriage and family therapist today. Um, so um, yeah, from there, what happened when I was in school is um, I started doing internet development on the side, and I really loved it. Um, and actually had a corporate America job doing internet web development uh, for a couple of years. Realized that I'm I'm a pretty bad employee, um, and so I think that's another thing that kept me uh, in the game 
in terms of being an entrepreneur. Number one, I had, I was like Richard Gere in an officer and a gentleman. I've got nowhere else to go. Right. I've got, I didn't have anything else. So like I had to have uh, a business um, to, to do. And then uh, as well, uh, I'd say professionally, again, I just, I didn't have any, didn't really have any good options. And so, um, so thankfully, I think in, in every case, like the writing was on the wall, like, you know, one of the businesses, you know, I was a partner in a small town internet service provider that, you know, didn't go, didn't end up going very well. But meanwhile, I'd already been growing another business. And thankfully that one kind of took over and that one, and one of them was like a small town newspaper and a blog before there was such things as blogs. Um, but I was afraid of, uh, like I said, I was afraid of rejection. I was more, I, I was just, I didn't want to go and have to do anything that resembled selling because I was so nervous about getting rejected um, that it kept me from um, extending that risk. Had I just done that, I probably would have made you know more money for sure. I wouldn't have had to you know declare bankruptcy or lose a house or something like that. Um, but eventually, see, I learned the lessons that I needed to learn. I learned about the you know, when we're in business, the sacred obligation we have to create an impact in the world and the best way that we can have an impact in the world is by connecting with and serving more people. And that really is the best way of doing sales. So Savings Angel was, um, so that was my first, that was my first seven figure company. And that one launched in uh, January 2007, had spent about four or five months building it. And this was a website that would help you cut your grocery bill in half back when people were into using coupons. And we had launched it a couple of years before, a few years before extreme couponing hit, a couple of years before the recession hit, uh, about, a, about a year, year and a half before the recession hit. So we were just really well positioned. Um, so that by the time the recession hit, started going up and then extreme couponing became a thing. And that's where it started having six figure months. And that's pretty fun. <laughs> that is, that is fun to go from zero to a hundred thousand dollars in sales and do it yeah. quickly. So when did you know that savings angel, you know, was a product on the market that people really wanted and needed? What was sort of your proof of concept uh, in that process for you? You know, I, I really would, should have done a lot more, um, research ahead of time. All I knew is that I had come up with this concept and I'd seen some other websites that were kind of doing, I'm like, man, that's so ugly. I can create a much better version of this and, you know, and, and cover stores that they're not even covering. And so there was some inspiration from a couple of other websites that existed that were just terrible. And I'm like, I could do a great job at this. And so, um, and, and really added features that they weren't even thinking about. Um, so that's what, that's what I developed, built. And thankfully, you know, what I was able to do and how we were able to do over $6 million in revenue with zero paid ads is, you know, again, another situation where my hand was kind of forced. I had no money for budget because I was broke when I launched Savings Angel. And so instead I reached out to all my local media. Now I had been a journalist in the United States Navy for five years. So I, I had a degree of comfort in knowing that I could ask and that I could show up and I could serve. And um, so it was a local Christian broadcaster in Holland, Michigan, JQ 99. And it was uh, Mandy, er oh gosh, what's his name? Eric, Mandy and Trevor. And they doing a morning show. And I called up, you know, someone there. I said, listen, I'd I'd love to do a segment. Uh, I I don't have money for advertising, but you know, here's what I could do in this segment. Do you think you know? I kind of pitched them on an idea, and uh, they said, "Sure, you know, we'll have you in." And we did the segment. I was not real great on that first one, um, but it was good enough that uh, you know that week, Leo. Um, I uh, it was a Tuesday, and we had owed it was a couple hundred dollars on our heating bill. Uh, at the time. And um, that that bill was due, I think it was due that, day, that Friday or maybe the Monday after or something. And I just didn't have the money for it. I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm, I, I, have to, I might have to call we're my parents for money. Off. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. And certainly, you know, if you're in Michigan and you know, February, you don't want to have your that. heat you turned that. off. Yeah. So, um, so when I went into the, the, the radio 
station that morning, I did the segment. And at the time, there, there was no like, you know, where you had your phone and you could get like ding, 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 you know, you know, notifications from Stripe or something like that. I had no idea what was going on. So I did the segment. I drove home and I made um, I made enough money to pay that heating bill from from that 50, from that little five minute radio segment. And then some because that was a month of recurring revenue as we were charging twenty dollars a month for this monthly membership that paid that heating bill. And uh, and. Like I said, um, I did well enough that they invited me back. And then that led to a second radio station. And then that led to working with a clear channel and iHeart and doing syndicated radio, um, started doing a small town um, once a month consumer column. And they were, none of these people are paying me for this, by the way. I'm doing it and I'm doing it all laser focused on providing the most valuable content I can. And oh, by the way, I'm Josh from Savings Angel and you can see how we'll help you cut your grocery bill in half. You're welcome to take a look at that. And I just didn't sell. I focused on value and and serving that audience. Um, went into local TV, Kalamazoo, Michigan, did a did a, a TV segment there, worked out okay. Then I went up to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now we're in the big time. And then from there, did a number of TV segments and then eventually got to Chicago and then started doing um, WGN and W uh, or D- the ABC affiliate there. Um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this, and it really started taking off on us. Uh, and that was, and then that turned into syndicated TV. So all told today, uh, I've been in the media well over, I over 2,500 times, um, you know, wow. just keep on showing up and just keep on serving, bringing value to audiences. So then as you're, you're growing savings, Angel, you're becoming kind of a media personality of someone who helps consumers and families to save a lot of money, to use coupons smartly and budget. And this is, this is during right after the recession of 0809. Yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really interesting. Like I, um, you know, we develop feelings of beliefs about ourselves. And I think that one thing I personally do, and, and I invite anyone who's listening to this conversation to ask themselves, where do you thrive? When do you really do well? And I feel like I really do well when I look around and I say, oh, crap. I mean, things are really hitting the wall right now. Can I help? Can I step up and can I provide, can I help folks in this situation right now? Like, what can I do? You know, and, and that, that necessity, you know, and every, you know, leap forward I've done in business has been out of, here's an opportunity to provide value, to do good in the world. And then that then turned into a very successful business. What false beliefs do you think you had, uh, you know, before you got started that were kind of holding you back? It sounded like you had, you know, some different ideologies. I mean, we're all raised, you know, different uh, ways, different environments. And some of those false beliefs I know hold us back. What what were some of those that uh, you feel like kind of you had to understand and and get get past? What were some of those? For me, it was the fear of, of putting myself out there. Um, and being rejected. And I didn't want to have a sales conversation with someone, say, for example, for the newspaper, where they would say, nah, I don't want to give you any money for that. That that doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> that fear of them saying, this is not a good, I don't believe this is a good business decision for us. I felt so nervous about that, that that was going to translate to, you know, that they were rejecting me. That's what I was afraid of. When in fact, it had nothing to do with you know, whether they like me or not. And, but yet I was so concerned about that, that it kept me from uh, putting myself out there, which I really, you know, again, it's, it's all part of our journey. But again, what I learned in that it's, listen, people get to make a decision for themselves and it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't really say anything about you, right? I think our best, our most important work is just to kind of get out of the way you know, be a very authentic person that's focused on creating positive outcomes for other people. And if people feel that, awesome. Um, but if they don't, just trust that. Like, and and the goal here then should be law of averages that if you're stressed by saying, oh my gosh, I've got two sales calls this week and I have to get someone to buy. That's a tough position to be in. Like the goal really should be, is to create systems where you can talk with lots and lots and lots of 
your dream ideal clients and your dream ideal guests. And if you're not doing that, then you have a marketing problem because the marketing should give you that. And and I've got some philosophies on marketing. We could geek out on that a lot because I have I have some pretty strong opinions. <laughs> Let let's do that. Let's talk about it. You know, whenever there's a disruption like there's been yeah. in all of our lives in business over the last uh, nine, 10 months with this pandemic and the economic slowdown that's followed it, businesses have to pivot and they have to change the way they're marketing and the way they're running their business. And so for those startups that are, you know, listening to this podcast or someone who's looking to really grow and, and they're maybe an entrepreneur, like what are the changes that we are seeing in the marketing world? And especially as people move to more online um, avenues that they need to be aware of that you can help them out with. Yeah. Um, so here's, I, I, I believe, and I've seen the evidence that we are in the midst of the marketing rebellion. Um, Mark Schaefer has done some excellent work. Um, as a matter of fact, calls a, has a book called The Marketing Rebellion. We're in the midst of a marketing apocalypse. Excuse me, I, let me use my, we're in the midst of a marketing apocalypse. And, the, and what's going on here, and this has been, this has been a slow build, um, consumers, and I've studied and led on consumer behavior for 13 years. Consumers have never been more protective have never been more cynical, have never been more like, I don't want to be sold to like, and no one wants, no one really likes to be sold to, but especially now what's caused this way too much noise. So when you go on the internet, you're bombarded with ads and it's amazing how much work people will go through to insulate themselves from being sold to. So if you're a marketer, what do you do? Well, you can't sell. You've got to stop selling, right? And so if you're coming across like you got this fake, phony, scarcity webinar, handing out white papers, sliding into people's DMs, and you get into the sales conversation too early, it is over before it ever began, right? It's like being on a dating app and just running around saying, hey, good looking, you want to get married? And it's like, um, what? That's a little awkward. So yeah, you don't want to be doing that. But unfortunately, that's what all marketers, that's what I was, a vast majority of marketers are doing. Um, and it no longer works. And so you could pay more money. You can give Mark Zuckerberg more money. You can give Google more money. Um, and you're going to get the same kind of uh, success rate as typical spammers uh, because that's the bucket that you're being lumped into if you believe that it's just, you know, be spammy and be salesy to more and more and more people. And you got to get in front of more eyeballs. And that's what it all comes down to. If you have a bad approach, I mean, I, I'm, you know, my background comes from how was I able to get in the media over you know, 2,500 times. And it's about cultivating authentic relationships. It's about serving first. It's about bringing value first. And man, you don't even get into a sales conversation until it feels abundantly appropriate to do that. And if you don't have the huevos to do that, you, you might want to rethink your role. Uh, because, you know, when you wake up in the morning and your first thought is, who am I going to sell to? Now, I'm not talking about if, you know, if you're in a financial situation where it's like, well, this kind of sucks. I really got to pay my bills. Like I've been there. I know what that's like. Um, but what I'm talking about, if you're in it all for the money, like that's emotionally, spiritually, that's a tough position to be in. Money's great. Money's a tool. There's nothing inherently wrong about it. But if you place money above people and the lives of other people and the impact that you can have in the world, I'm just going to tell you, like, you're going to get to a point where like, okay, now what? And you might say, that's fine, Josh. I'll deal with that when I get there. But I'm just telling you right now, it's eating at you right now because you feel like you don't have that worth. Cubby talks about, Stephen Cubby talks about this, right? And so it's like, people have to have meaning behind what they do. So instead, what I want you to focus on, and if you'll do this, you will find that sales will be the easiest thing in the world for you. And that is, is if you put other people first, you wake up in the morning and you say, who do I get to serve today? What impact do I get to realize in the lives of other people today? And I'm just here to, to bring my highest good and be my, you know, my best self and to really just give to all people. Even if these people don't have the means to immediately pay you for your time and or effort, um, what you'll find is it may feel inefficient at first. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm not going right for the jugular in terms of sales. This is going to take a while. Yeah, it might. 
All right. But that's that's how great businesses are built. When you have a stellar authority and reputation in the industry, you just don't have to work very hard. Like, I mean, I could tell you and for up my influence, we stopped doing any bit of outbound November of last year of 2019. And in 2020, when other, some people are like really hit hard and, in, you know, impact in a very tough way and other people are freaking out and panicking, you know, we have four to six X every, every metric, four to 10 X every metric in our business. And that is with zero outbound, zero paid ads. Everything we do is 100% inbound. Now, it's taken a while to build that and get to that. And I'm happy. I'll listen, I'll share everything and anything we do because uh, I got to be honest, like at this point, Leo, I see myself as more of an evangelist for this way of doing business more so than anything I do, any service I offer or any of that sort of thing. So basically over the last 13 months, you guys have gotten so busy. You don't have to do Facebook marketing. You don't have you know outbound uh, spend that you're having to invest in. No. So would you attribute that to word of mouth from so many happy customers? Is it just your systems? Is it strategic partner relationships or, or how, what, how does it yes, happen yes, and for yes. all those, all those yes, startups yes. trying to do what you've done? Yeah, all, all of the above, all of the above. And that should be the goal. Think of it. Well, let's, let's give you a, like a micro example, right? Let's say you're a local real estate professional, like you're a, a realtor. What should your goal be? Should it be that, you know, you can afford lots of, um, you know, bus stop ads or, you know, maybe, I mean, I guess that's one way to do it if that's what you really want. But what would happen if you had five to 800 people in your local part of town that if you asked any of them, you know, who would you do business? Who knows a realtor? And they immediately always come to you and they always talk about you on social media. This is the new, this is the economy. This is the way that consumers take action today. It's not based on, you know, who's got the biggest ads. It's about, you know, who do, if I trust my friends and I've got multiple friends that all say, you got to talk to Josh because he's the greatest realtor in East Orlando. Um, Leo, it's game, set, match for that realtor. They no longer have to work very hard. Their business is always handed to them on a silver platter. So in our experience, you know, yes, um, the the natural relationships came as a result of, you know, our uh, commitment to generosity. And so we leverage three things. And so the person's watching this, listening to this, you want to write this down because this is what, this is, I believe the future where success is today and if you're not catching up to this, you got to get, get caught up to this, right? And there's three, three main areas where I believe if you want to sell more than you've ever sold before, you need to have one great authority. And what that means is that today's consumer is going to check you out. And so if you do a Google search on me, I can tell you exactly what you're going to find because I feel like I've, I've really done a lot of I've, I've done good in the world and I continue to try to do good in the world. And what'll happen is when you keep on doing good in the world, Google will reward, reward you for that. And eventually, you know, your website gets better and better the more you do it. And you start to build up more and more authority indicators. Certainly you can see all the press that I've done and that helps as well. Um, so authority is really important. Number two is the philosoph the like as philosophically you need to be a giver. You need to be insanely generous. If you have a scarcity mindset and everything's behind the paywall and it's just like ah, and I'm gonna give them a lead magnet and then I'm gonna sell them a tripwire and then I'm gonna sell them this and I'm gonna sell them that and it's like this ascent this old school ascension model. Um, that can work in certain areas. I'd say early, if you're selling to early, early stage entrepreneurs, it can work. Um, you know, there's a lot of noise out there. So I feel like you're still going to have to earn it. You're still going to have to have the authority behind it. But by and large, if you want to sell to otherwise successful, you know, kind of like next phase business owners, it's going to be a whole lot more than automation. Automation ain't going to do it because Leo, do you like to be automated by someone who's trying to sell you something? 
No, we all want customer communication. We want something authentic and real. Yeah, yeah. And so when it comes down to it, it's all about relationships. And Absolutely. you can't rush relationships, but you can develop systems and processes on the back end that facilitate a ton of them. And so if you will have the guts to build relationships with lots and lots of people, then you're going to be set for life. So when we were back in November 19 and we were doing probably 30 plus calls a week and I'm like, this is way too much. So we turned off we were in, in our case, you know, for outbound, the best thing we found for B2B was LinkedIn sales navigator, just awesome. Um, but we turned it off and we're like, okay, we'll turn it back on after the holidays, maybe January. And we just really never needed to. Um, so consistently we talk with about 12 people a week and that's appropriate for our business at this stage. We've got a few ba other back end stuff that we're working on. And then we probably will turn something back on, but until, you know, <laughs> until then it's great. I love it. And I get what's cool about it because again, we are uh, a very uh, like high level consultant. So our client, like our ideal partner client that, that we work with is a six figure consultant. They're very good at what they do. They sell higher ticket items and we get them to seven figures. And we're very, very good at that. And the reason we're good at that is because we solve the problem that they can't solve for themselves. And that is that they run out of people to talk to and they're not talking with enough people and they're relying on, well, you know, we talk with two to three people a week. I'm like, well, what would happen if you talked to 20? Yeah, let's get like, well, we would make 10 times more money. I'm like, well, okay, well, let's do that then. And so the goal now, so we talked about authority. We talked about generosity, but I now, believe the three? Third, third leg of that stool is platform. I believe of all the things that you can give away, I believe that we've seen this pretty consistently that leveraging platform is probably the easiest win, easiest path to being able to be generous and give to people. So what does that look like? It could be a podcast. It could be a live stream. It could be some sort of thing where you invite proximity. Let's just do something nice together. Something that is the other person has a mandate to do. So for me, for example, I'm here serving. This is what I do. Leo, this gives you and I the opportunity to spend time together. And I noticed something. This is really interesting. A lot of times people build podcasts and people build platforms because they want to impact members of the audience. Now, interesting thing um, is, you know, now having hosted uh, probably over 800 podcast episodes myself, uh, having been a guest on like 250 podcasts, I end up doing on average way more business with the guest or the host because of that time that we spend together. You know, if you've served on a panel or you've served at an event and you get to network with the other speakers, I end up generally doing way more business with people behind the scenes than I do with folks in the audience. Folks in the audience, I generally don't sell to, I give to, uh, and I serve as hard as I can. And yeah, you know, I might get a few people here and there, but that's not why I'm there. I mean, I'm there to just deliver the goods and always try to be a good guy on stage. Like, don't turn it into an uncomfortable sales kind of thing. Like, I give, just give, 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 give away stuff. Because what I've learned as well, is that where you plant your seeds is not necessarily where you reap your harvest. There are a lot of connectors in the audience. Um, but because we haven't spent time together one-on-one, -on -one, it's a little bit harder to, you know, really move the needle on that relationship. Now, again, you know, hopefully at some point in the future, we'll connect, we'll chat and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's, you know, we're moving forward. But um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I think the greatest value for, you know, someone has an existing podcast, uh, you know, um, I, I really think, you know, serve the audience, you know, give to them, um, but, you know, explore and network with people. So, um, for example, Leo, you and I may chat afterwards or we may chat beforehand. You, you know, you say, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And, you know, kind of we kind of, you know, talk about our individual businesses and you're like, oh, got the perfect connection for you. Man, connections and um, strategic alliances like that is where business just makes, you know, huge, huge money. I mean, shift forward uh, in exploring the, you know, the maximization of, of a relationship. 
no this is question. Be very no awkward question. for you and I afterwards now that I've been talking about all this. No, like, I, all I'm right, actually no. looking forward to it. I'm, I'm planning <laughs> I'm on too- it because because I've seen that as we brought yes. really successful, awesome people like yourself onto this uh, show. That's exactly what's ha- what happens. We we had a webinar guy Paul Ace on a few weeks ago. Yeah, had a great uh, web or a great uh, podcast with him, and and he knew you know John Lee Dumas of the EO Fire and yeah. all these others, and I knew some people, and I didn't even think twice. He introduced a few a few you know uh, strategic partners we work with, with uh, to him, and all now this all of a sudden they're doing business, and great things are happening yeah. there, and it really is this network, this fraternity that we can all be a part of. But you're right, having the platform is where it all begins. And that's why you're hearing Russell Brunson say this a lot nowadays, that if you want to be financially free, if you want to deliver value, if you want to build a community, you got to have that platform. And whether it's a podcast, a show, a newsletter, whatever it is, something that gives you the opportunity to bring quality people on and then ask them the questions. That's that's what I love yeah. being able to ask you know, an expert like Josh, like, how do I build that online authority? How do I deliver value? You know, what am I missing in my sales funnels? And and the platform, the platform yeah. is, is what it's all about. And you're saying the, the consumer, the buyer is more cynical now than they've ever been. There's so much noise. There's so much going on in the media in the world today. And so how do you cut through to that? And from what you're saying, it's to create what uh, author MJ DeMarco says is a productocracy, a product or service that's so good that it spreads by word of mouth. Yeah. So as someone who creates those products and services, how do you make your product and service that good? Because you're right, you could have the authority, but then that next step of delivering value and having a product or service that's yeah. so good that people, yo, know, hey, Bob's the best uh, real estate agent in town, you've got to work with him. How does that that creation of that type of product or service take place for someone who's looking to do that. Yeah. So you got to have a great product. I mean, without question, I mean, if you, if your product really isn't like there's problems, like you product development is so critical. Does this truly solve big problems? Does this truly make a big impact in the lives of the people that you'd like to work with? If it doesn't, you got to keep working on it and figure out how can I make this better? Because it, you can't sell today. You just can't sell Beep. Like you, you, you can't get away with it. That was a swear word, by the way. <laughs> Insert your favorite swear word right there. You can't sell it because it's not going to last. You got to be authentic. You got to give way more value than what you charge. So I am a big fan of once you dial it in and you're like, this thing works. Like our first client, you know, when we build B2B sales systems, she did $175,000 in sales in 90 days. Okay. It's a good product. So I could run around and I could sell that thing for $25,000, $50,000 and people would buy it. But what we elected to do is said, wait a minute, we kind of don't need to sell anymore. And, and, and so we've taken the approach. I'm a big fan of frictionless offers and I'm a huge fan of trying to find value, ba- you know, create value-based pricing based on a joint venture relationship, strategic alliance. How can we partner together? And let me give you a couple of, let me, let me show you, let me, I'll explain like the decision that we came to. And we did this back in March of this year and it completely changed our business model. So we were charging 25 K to build this system. It's great. It works. Okay. But we ended up working, like a couple people came through, like, we do not enjoy working with this person. <laughs> like, they're just like, it's All money, not, not a good, good money, right? Not a good culture fit. Yeah. So we, um, um, no names. Um, <laughs> so we said, wait a minute. And then we realized that when we had a couple, you know, we had some clients that were doing, like, they're doing a couple hundred thousand dollars in business. We said, wait a minute. What would happen if we said, we're going to de-risk it for you and actually take an investor relationship in what you're doing right here for a great long-term relationship where we can get a piece of the action for life. Would you be more open to that? Now that's interesting because when we, so our model now is we still charge 25 K, but we don't get that until we've earned $50,000 for our client. That said, now, because of the risk that we assume, it's really cool. Like, I love this because now I haven't, I haven't, since March, I haven't had a single sales call. Every call now is a partnership, potential partnership discussion where they kind of get to 
you know, they get to explain their part of it. I get to explain. And we look at the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and we see, is there a fit? Most, I would say majority of time, there's not. Like I, either there's like, they got to have the right product. They got to have the right audience. Culture, it has, we have to have culture fit. They have to be a relationship first business. And if I feel, and then there's like one other thing, which I can't remember right now, but I've got a checklist. And if they check all four boxes, then I'm definitely interested in moving the ball forward. And if they are, um, then, you know, let's inst- so think about the numbers on this. I could charge them 25K to build this thing. And then I could sell another one. And I could sell another one. And I keep have to find, you know, I have to keep finding people to, to build out these projects for. So instead now what we get to do is because we have a long-term commission relationship together. My goal now is I want a couple of hundred people that are all paying me about four or $5,000 a month in commissions. So the math on that, I like. That's an annuity. That's lifetime money. Um, and what our clients or our partners really love is we are now locking arms with them and we have a holistic interest in the outcome. It's not just, oh, I'm going to build you a funnel and good luck, amigo. <laughs> Instead, we're like, we're going to work together. We're going to build you a system. We're going to keep your schedule really filled and you are going to work together on how sales gets done today because- it ain't one call closing. I can tell you that it's it's about nurturing relationships and being an awesome person. That's how sales gets done today. Um, and it's a product so, that's that's going to pay out month after month. Instead yeah. of creating something that's kind of a uh, one and done, you're creating yes. something that's going to be you know monthly recurring revenue. And and the sooner that someone can create a business model where they've got recurring income that's coming back and forth because your your results are all intertwined, mm-hmm. you actually are putting your money where your mouth is to the client and saying, hey, we're going to win on this together and yeah. you're going to be paying me out of new income. Now they're more motivated. It's a win-win everywhere. And, and that's how business is done. It's not like in the 80s and 90s where you just had a product and it may not actually work that well. <laughs> yeah. but if you spend a lot of money, it's going to work. You can't do that anymore. You have to yeah. provide real value that gets people tangible results. And if you don't, then you'll be out of business. But when you do start to create the right product and service, now you've got to find a way to make it long-term. And that's a really big seven-figure secret that you just shared with the audience. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I would I would rewind this back about five, 10 minutes. And, and Leo, especially how you capped that right there. Um, you're going to either understand what I just shared with you, the, the power of what I just shared with you intellectually, or you're going to understand it intellectually. And also, oh my gosh, wait a minute, this could completely change my life. So again, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, of, of sharing in the risk where you can. And ultimately you're going to be able to charge a lot more money. You're going to make a lot more money because you're guaranteed to outperform for your client. And if you have the guts to do that, and that means generally my, our clients or partners love that offer because they're like, well, that shows me that you, you know that what you do works. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, absolutely. that's absolutely so, it. So, and Josh, if I didn't the, know it worked, I probably wouldn't offer this. <laughs> where is the best place for, you know, entrepreneurs listening to this podcast to connect up with you and to start to, you know, receive some of that value and get on the journey uh, to creating this online authority value. And, and even it sounds like the right business model, you can kind of probably coach them up there and just, this this is the way business is done here going mm-hmm. into 2021. So if someone totally. wants to have their breakthrough year, how do they connect up with Josh and up my influence and what things should they be doing, you know, and getting ready so that they can have a really productive conversation with you and your team? Yeah, I would say, you know, if you're early stage in business, then I'll just teach like I I I I'm very transparent. Like as you could tell, like I just I just tell everyone everything I do. Like I, I believe in glass running a glass house business, you know, because I just, you know, if someone um, wasn't going to, if someone, you know, someone doesn't buy, I mean, if, if someone looks at what I offer um, and I just, I just teach everybody everything, either they were already kind of predestined to buy or they're not quite ready for it. So for the people who are not quite ready for it, they were never going to buy anyway. So I'm just going to teach you how to do it yourself. I'm okay with that. Like <laughs> I am totally like, and so therefore now I get the goodwill of being that teacher who's very generous and not, oh, you know, for $2.99, I'll teach you my million dollar sales system. I just teach you for free. Like, it's okay. You keep your money, you go get successful 
And then, you know, down the road, you know, you start getting into six figure territory. Then by all means, you know, let's chat, you know, and that might be appropriate timing for us. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of divide this. If you're early stage, you go to upmyinfluence.com. Um, you, you could see where you can click and say, yeah, Josh, show me this B2B system. And I'm not going to have you opt in. I'm not going to collect your email address. Like I'm confident I'm good. Like if you like me, then I'll, you can reach out to me proactively. I trust you. Okay. And that's another thing too. I think as marketers, we get to start treating people like adults rather than like, oh, I'll let you look behind the curtain, but you got to give me your email address first. Like whatever, man, just, you know, earn that time, earn that attention and, and make it easy, make it frictionless and easy for people. Uh, by the way, I'm probably ticking some people off like Josh, you're messing up my sales system, buddy. Um, so anyway, so if you go to disrupt, influence, if you want to make a that? difference, you got to disrupt, you're disrupting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, feel free to poke around, lurk, um, go see how I do things because I promise you what you're looking at is thousands of mistakes to get to what we have right now. Um, so hopefully I can shorten the learning curve for you. Now, if you're a business owner and you're already doing six figures in business, like you're good at what you do, particularly if you're a six figure consultant in any way, like there's, you sell a bigger ticket item, um, and you, are ideally trying to find an audience that you just want more meetings. Um, I, listen, I would love to be, before we even have a conversation about maybe even working together, like already, I can tell you, I would love to feature you on our podcast. That's the thoughtful entrepreneur, Leo, you were a guest on our podcast. Um, you know, we we'd be thrilled to share your story. We have over 120,000 people in our social media audience that will promote you to. Um, and we're thrilled to do that. Um, I want to learn from your success. We're going to talk about growing and scaling and, you know, leadership type stuff and how you got there. Um, and you'll see that if you go to up my influence.com. You'll, you'll see where that link is to book that um, guest appearance. And, and, and I would be honored. I'd be honored to share your story. Perfect guys. So up my There's plenty of amazing value and uh, things there. And then you'll also learn just a lot about uh, the way you should be marketing to people. And then the other thing that I've seen from Josh is he has technology that, that a lot of people don't where magically you'll get an email and it will have Josh with your name on it waving. I don't know if he like literally writes everybody's name I down and he has like tens of thousands of those or he probably has some secret technology to him. No, no, it's literally, tips. look at this right here. This was, I just wrote this to Mark and here's my, here's my little dry erase marker. And here, the most important part, Toilet tissue. I go through a lot of toilet <laughs> tissue. Uh, but this is what we're talking about. It's, it's more authentic. Yes. It's more personal. Absolutely. It's customized. And that's what people want. They don't want to totally. be just the, the first name just pulled and, and sent into an email campaign. They want customized and authentic and, and real stuff that's not cynical. And, and that's, I think, Absolutely. what people need to learn from Up My Influence is how to create sales processes that are just much more authentic like that. Yeah. Yeah. Spend more time with fewer people, uh, the, you know, the, the right people that you're like, man, this, this could potentially be a good relationship here. I mean, just give it all, give it, give it all away to them, you know, earn, you know, you know, it's like, think of like dating. It's like when you have those first handful of dates, like you are, you are on your best behavior because you, you want, you're courting, like you want them to, to get the best experience of you. You're like texting them like, and you're being like sweet and thoughtful and generous. And like, you're just being the best version of yourself. Be that for your guests, be that for your potential clients. Um, they deserve it. Quit trying to shortcut them because they know what you're doing and they don't like it. Amen. Well, guys, Josh has provided an amazing value today. Go to upmyinfluence.com, learn as much as you can follow Josh when you're ready to go from six to seven figures, you know, reach out to him. Even if maybe you're not, he can absolutely provide a pathway to get you there. He has a great team and there's just so much that you can learn. And if you don't, like it's going to be tough to stay in business and you've seen it already. There's a certain percentage of entrepreneurs that have made the pivot that are following and learning from Josh and going through his process. And those that, that don't, I mean, it's going to, you're, it's going to, you're not going to be able to stay in business. It's just that simple. So you've got to take action, make that happen. Josh, last final words. What else uh, should, should we all be doing to make 2021 our breakthrough year as uh, we get ready? Yeah. Uh, take down all of your stuff. That's just salesy, spammy. You've got review everything that you do. 
And you got to be honest with yourself and say, would I opt in for this? Would I really buy this? Would I really pay attention to this drip campaign, this email automation drip campaign, or this AI bot? Would I honestly do that? Come on. Maybe ask people to just be, listen, I want you to roast me and tell me how bad my marketing is. <laughs> and just like, just say, honestly, like, think about how busy you are. Would you take time out of your day to do this? And if the answer is, I don't know, probably not. And you got to do something a little bit different. And usually that's all about lowering the wall, lowering the barrier, being more authentic with people, being more accessible, approachable, uh, giving more, um, trusting and treating people like adults, because that's what consumers demand today. So 14 years as a consumer expert, I could tell you this is exactly what's going on. You could read Marketing Rebellion by Mark Schaefer, ClickSand, End of Marketing. There are a lot of good people that are doing a lot of good research on what's going on in consumers' head right now. And by the way, you, I, I, we're all consumers. Doesn't matter if you're selling B2G, B2B, B2C, whatever, everyone's a consumer. Nobody wants to be treated like a, a number. They all want to be treated just like you want to be treated. So be authentic and real in 2021, deliver a lot more value and a great, uh, do a personal marketing audit. You know, look at your email campaigns, look at what you're actually delivering in value. Probably we all need to take a look at our website and, and think, are, are we really, you know, answering and, and solving the problems that our customer has when they come to our website and go through our social media? So great, great, great concepts there. Very true that we need to do. Josh, thanks so much for being on the show today. Amazing value. You guys may want to rewind this one and, and to review it uh, once a month to keep your marketing and your online authority. But if you haven't gone to upmyinfluence.com yet, please do upmyinfluence.com and interact with Josh as soon as possible. Are you looking for more seven-figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession-proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F-I-G-U-R-E-S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession-proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.